So two months ago, I was in Northern California where Mazda flew me out to drive the all new 2019 Mazda 3 sedan. Now in that video, I proclaimed it to be a very good step toward that Mazda premium direction that the company so wanted to move forward in with all their newest products. So as you can see, I'm back here in DC where the company has loaned me the five door hatchback version of the same car. It, it rides on the same all new platform. It comes standard with a 2.5 liter engine. It has that really upscale interior and it's newly available with all wheel drive. Now the Mazda 3 five door has always been kind of viewed as the alternative to a Volkswagen GTI. So in today's video, I wanna find out if that's truly still the case. So starting off with the front fascia of the Mazda 3 hatchback. Now, remember, I've shown you guys a full review of the sedan, so I really want to talk about the differences in the hatchback body style, especially when you have it painted in this poly metal gray exterior color, which kind of has hues of blue, of metal, of gray in the paint color. It looks fantastic, and Mazda doesn't even charge you extra for this paint color. As you can see, this particular one is the fully loaded version of the hatchback. Mazda calls it the premium package. It includes a slightly different color on the grill, whereas the sedan gives you the chrome. Mazda does give you the blacked out chrome on the hatchback version. All Mazda 3s will come standard with full LED headlights. You'll have LED daytime running lights, an LED turn signal, and then LED low and high beams. This particular one with the premium package also has swiveling adaptive headlights. So again, very upscale feature, but Mazda has been offering that on the 3 since like 2010. Now down here, you can see the front lower area is different versus the sedan, where the sedan had kind of like a cutout here that looked like fog lights. The hatchback version is kind of smoothed out a little bit. There's no fog lights available on this generation, which I think is a mistake. I also kind of wish that Mazda gave this a slightly more aggressive looking lower front air dam. I know a lot of brands are kind of adding in those fake intake scoops, but I think the Mazda 3 might be a little bit too plain. I like how they're bucking the trend of all these fake grill outlets, but I think to complete the sportier look and make this thing kind of like a GT alternative, it needs a little bit of uh, an air intake down here, whether it's fake or whether it's real. It just needs something to kind of break up the smoothness of the overall front fascia. So at the side profile of the Mazda 3 hatchback, in the past, the sedan was always not the better looking choice. The hatchback was always the looker in the lineup. So for this new generation, this fourth generation, some of you have definitely voiced your opinion about the controversy of that rear C pillar back there, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Now, this one being the premium package model does include these black finished wheels, which I do think looks sharp with this poly metal gray exterior color. They're an 18 inch wheel wrapped in 215 uh, 45 series tires. And the tires are a little bit smaller or they're skinnier than a lot of the competition. Remember a Honda Civic hatchback uh, with the sport trim uh, gives you an 18 inch wheel with a 235 width tire. Same thing with a Toyota Corolla and a Volkswagen GTI and even a Hyundai Elantra GT N line gives you a 20 millimeter thicker tire. So I'm not entirely sure why Mazda decided to go with a skinnier wheel, which should improve the fuel economy, but we'll talk about that in just a moment. Now, its wheelbase was stretched by an inch versus the previous generation at 107.3 inches long. This has one of the longer wheelbases in the segment by about an inch. However, its overall length did not change from the previous generation at 175.6 inches long. This is about five inches longer than something like a Hyundai Elantra GT N-Line. It's about two and a half inches shorter, however, than the Honda Civic hatchback, but this is also a couple inches bigger than something like a Subaru Impreza hatchback or a Toyota Corolla hatchback, which is actually significantly smaller and about seven inches longer than a Volkswagen uh, GTI hatchback, which you couldn't really tell from the overall profile. But this area here, I wanna talk about this because this chunky uh, C pillar right here is, has been a, quite a controversy. Now I'm still kind of getting used to it. What I really wish Mazda had added are some hard lines in the body panel. Some of you have compared it to it looking like an egg or a whale or just something that looks a little too curvaceous. So this is gonna be an element where Mazda is going to have to make some improvements or some changes to address the controversy, especially if they decide to introduce a Mazda Speed version or a turbocharged version, which they say is being considered heavily for the US market. Now, another thing that's been quite a controversy has been the rear suspension on this new generation. It's now a semi-independent twist beam as opposed to the fully independent multi-link the previous generation has had for years, ever since this car came out back in 2004. Now Mazda claims the rear suspension, despite it being cheapened this year, hasn't affected the ride quality, hasn't affected the handling. We'll talk about that later in the test drive. So at the rear of the new Mazda 3 hatchback, you can see the design is quite the change versus the previous generation, especially when you look at the rear taillight design and the overall shape of this vehicle. Now, the first thing you're probably gonna notice, it's got full LED taillights at the rear, which is a huge upgrade versus the previous generation which had kind of a LED combination with incandescent. You can see the turn signal is LED, the reverse light is LED, the brake light in general is LED. I think it looks fantastic. 
This to me looks a lot more expensive. It takes a lot of cues from the uh, concept car and I think it really elevates the look of the car and it really looks a lot different. Underneath here you can see you have some black accents in the lower fascia. All Mazda 3s will come with the dual exhaust setup with the 2.5 liter engine. Before this dual exhaust was limited to uh, the hatchback model and then you can see there's a subtle little all-wheel drive badge here to let everybody know that you guys bought the all-wheel drive model. Now when you, wanna, when you wanna open up the hatchback you can see the emblem here has been slightly changed uh, but if you push underneath it the button that will release the hatch. Now Mazda doesn't offer a power lift gate which is kind of the norm in this segment. You're not going to find a power lift gate but the hatchback is of course the more practical choice versus the sedan. You're looking at 20.2 cubic feet of space which actually matches that of a Subaru Impreza or a Toyota Corolla hatchback. Actually it's a little bit more than a Corolla hatchback but if you're going to look at like something like a Honda Civic hatchback that's going to offer about five cubic feet more and if you fold down those seats Mazda actually didn't have any uh, official numbers when you fold down the seats but I imagine it's going to expand it to just under uh, 50 cubic feet of space which is what the previous generation model uh, had. All right so enough about the outside of the new Mazda 3. Their interiors have been really where Mazda has been shining a lot lately. The first thing I want to talk about here's the same key fob that I showed you. It's a new key fob uh, that Mazda has introduced on this next generation three. It has buttons on the side. It's a much larger key fob versus the previous generation's uh, key. And I kind of actually am missing the old key. So I know a lot of you like to give me grief about the key, but this key is going to take some getting used to. It's just, it's too big. I wish Mazda had made it a little bit thinner like the previous uh, model key. But uh, they have a new uh, way to get into the inside of the vehicle instead of that button that they had before. Instead, and now you just get a touch sensitive pad, touch your finger there that will lock the doors. And then now Mazda has also added a touch sensor on the back of the handle. So you just have to touch the back of the handle and now that opens the door for you as opposed to pushing the button. Now, as you can see, this red interior with this polish metal gray is just oh my god it looks so expensive so upscale at a glance I mean this will seriously shame a lot of $50,000 luxury cars um, especially when you guys look at the price point of this car Mazda also includes an eight-way power driver seat which is great you have two-person memory it's on the dashboard now there's some new switch gear in here and the seats you got the upscale uh, leather in this premium trim, which is really comfortable. Unfortunately, they are only heated. Ventilated seats are not available. Mazda also took away the heated steering wheel that you could get on the previous generation. But as you can see here, just the level of detail here with the actual stitching on the door panels. You have a metal speaker cover. You have piano black plastic trim. It's nice and softly padded right there. It's soft padded on the door. So this is just really, really upscale looking. You can tell Mazda took their time with this interior. Now getting inside, it does require you to duck your head because of this low roof, uh, this pillar here. I'm, I'm short, I'm five foot seven, but uh, I did have to duck my head. Now when you wanna shut the door, it sounds really solid. So I think that might be the best sounding door slam in this you know, uh, entry level comp compact uh, sedan segment or compact hatchback segment. Now to start it up, like everything else, Put your foot on the brake, push that button here. You can see there's a new chime that I showed you in the sedan. The gauges have also been completely redesigned. I think that's a huge improvement over the previous generation, which kind of had a cheap, childish look to it, where you had two different tacks depending on the engine configuration. You have an actual true heads-up display here above you, which is projected onto the windshield as opposed to that plexiglass screen. And then over here, you can see it's got a new steering wheel option, or a new steering wheel in general. I kind of wish Mazda had went with the flat bottom wheel design, but you do get paddles. The leather also feels really expensive and nice. I just wish it was heated. I mean, look at that. There's buttons here that are empty where Mazda could have easily put the, the heated steering wheel option on this car. Your cruise control switches are there. Your audio control switches are over there. And then over here, there's more empty buttons here to turn on the iActive Sense adaptive cruise control or the driver assistance features. You can turn off your stability control there. More of these empty buttons, which drives me crazy, but I do like where they put the two level or the two person memory seats. There's a little bit of a storage area over there. Now over on the dashboard side or on the, you know, passenger side you can see this really nice soft stitched area here with the same leather on the seats it's actual stitching it's not the fake stuff but this over here is also soft touch it's even soft touch over here where this uh, new 8.8 inch Mazda connect infotainment system sits now this again is not a touch screen it does include Apple CarPlay and Android Auto it's standard on the hatchback model where this is optional on the sedan where you don't get Apple CarPlay but now because uh, the hatchback model is supposed to be more expensive it is standard. Now down here, I love the chrome accents that kind of go across the air vents. The air vents, as you can see, are underneath this stitch area. You have dual zone climate control. You have three level heated seats. You can see there's a button here where the cooled seats could go. Come on, Mazda, add the cooled seats. And then just the, the controls, they, they feel really high quality when you turn them. This is very Audi-like in here, which is really nice. Now down here in the center console, 
You have a USB port over here. You have some storage. You have cup holders, which have been moved to forward of the shifter, which is definitely a nice addition. This shifter hasn't changed uh, from the previous model. It still controls the six-speed automatic when you put it into reverse. I'm surprised the backup camera doesn't take up the entire 8.8-inch screen. The resolution has improved. It uh, doesn't have trajectory still and no parking sensors, so I'm surprised. Mazda does not offer a 360 camera, although I would argue you don't really need it in a car like this. Down here, you can see the Mazda Command wheel has been completely redesigned. It's got an actual home button there, favorites button. So this layout hasn't changed, but the feel of the switch gear is considerably better. Your volume controls there, you have an electronic parking brake, and then you have a sport button here that basically turns sport mode on or off. This gauge, by the way, is configurable. Uh, right now, I have it on the driver assist display. You push a button here on the steering wheel, it'll show a, an actual speedometer. You can show your driving information over there or you can go back to that, or you can turn everything off. So again, it's kind of simple, but I think it's effective because it looks very expensive. I do wish that Mazda allowed you to change the color in here and whatnot. There's no like mood ambient lighting in here. I would have liked to see some kind of interchangeable lighting, mood lighting like VW offers on the new Jetta. So that's something again that Mazda could work on with just finishing this car. It feels a little unfinishing. It's like they spent too much time on the interior and that new infotainment system. They forgot about some small details here. Now let's talk about this infotainment system because first of all, if you go over there to the right, there's Apple CarPlay. It takes up the entire 8.8 inch screen. It looks fantastic. It's also quick. The resolution is fantastic. Mazda has always been kind of behind the times a little bit, but now they finally caught up to this with this new infotainment system. But let's go back to the Mazda head unit because my tester has the embedded navigation option, which I couldn't show you when I was on the media launch. You can see here, this is a newer map resolution, which definitely is an, a huge improvement. You can see it's a little bit slow for my taste at times still, but it definitely is looking a lot better versus the previous generation, which was just a you know a variation of TomTom. -tom. And it, plus it just looks considerably better. This also has live traffic. You can see as, you, as I continue to zoom out, it just looks a lot more impressive um, versus the previous generation. So bravo on Mazda, if you must have you know, embedded nav, I'd highly recommend that as well. Now, a couple of things I wanna talk about. The overall layout hasn't really changed. You still have your information, entertainment, you have your phone, you have navigation, and your settings. Now, Mazda likes how when you go to the settings now, you can see it shows you a little indication of what you're actually changing. When you go to vehicle settings, for example, it'll show you a little graphical representation of what you're actually changing, which makes this thing look a lot more upscale but it still doesn't have the same kind of level of upscale as like Audi, of like Mercedes, of BMW. Your in-vehicle displays, this is where you can change your active driving display, you can change the brightness in here. You can also actually get rid of the double fuel gauge in here. If you guys don't want that double fuel gauge, you can go over here, change it from type one to type two, which is what it defaults to. And then when you go to type two, you can see, um, when you go to type two, you can see it actually gets rid of that double fuel gauge, which is a more simpler display. So I was torn on which one I liked more, but I do like how you can get rid of that redundant double fuel gauge, which is something that I kind of complained about before. So overall, I mean, this looks fantastic. The Bose 12 speaker audio system in this car also sounds fantastic. So I'm really happy with, you know, how Mazda have done that. They still haven't, they're still not doing wireless Apple CarPlay, which is kind of new. A lot of the premium brands are doing that. But you know this new display here is just phenomenal. I think Mazda's done a good job. I love the soft padding that goes along the uh, side here. It's all stitched. You have a nice padded armrest here. This is slides open to reveal your USB, another power. Outlet. And then my tester has a $280 wireless charger that's a, a port installed option, which I would highly recommend, um, which is nice. I also like the frameless rear view mirror, which is also a dealer installed or port installed option. And then the glove compartment here you can see is a pretty good size. The lid is damped, but it's not lined with felt. And I love the comfort of the seats, which is nice. Above me, there's just a standard size uh, sunroof. No panel roof is available, but it's included. You do have all LED lighting in the cabin here. So again, Mazda isn't really skimping too much. They just forgot to add a couple of premium features that I would expect them to add if they really want to be considered more of a premium brand. But overall, this red interior, the soft seats, I'm pretty happy with this this car, uh, but they just need to follow it up with a higher trim level to give you the options that I'm looking for. So in relation to the sedan, the hatchback's rear seat area actually hasn't changed despite it being about eight inches shorter versus the sedan. The legroom Mazda says is around 35.7 inches, which is a little bit smaller than what you're gonna get in a Honda Civic, but way more than a Toyota Corolla hatchback and a little bit less than a Subaru Impreza, but about the same as a Volkswagen GTI. So as you can see at five foot seven, I'm sitting back here. The floor is nice and low. There is a hump here in the center. So trying to put three people across might be a little bit of a challenge, but Mazda gives you one matte pocket here. And then the door panel materials are soft touch, just like the front 
front seats. So again, very nice interior, especially with this red color, although I will say it's a little bit dark. I wish Mazda would consider offering a panoramic sunroof. A couple of features that's missing in the back seat, no rear vents, no rear seat air, air, AC vents, which surprised me considering this is the most expensive model. And then no heated rear seats. They don't offer heated rear seats in this vehicle in general. Now they do have a nice little armrest that folds down that gives you two cup holders. Now the models with heated rear seats like a Mazda CX-5 or a, a Mazda 6 would have a little storage area here where the button would be uh, to uh, turn on the heated rear seats and there'd also be a USB port. So I think Mazda should just consider adding that to this vehicle. They may eventually do a signature trim, which I think would do extremely well if Mazda ever decided to do that. So underneath the hood of the Mazda 3 hatchback, just like the sedan, you can have any engine you want as long as it's a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine. This is their Skyactiv-G family engine. It's a direct injection engine with a high compression ratio, a special uh, header that is supposed to aid with efficiency. It's a, the same engine they've been using for years, although it has been tweaked ever so slightly to make 186 horsepower and 186 foot pounds of torque. That makes memorizing the numbers very easy for me and for a lot of the consumers. Now the horsepower and torque figures are actually still pretty high up there in the class, but this is one of the last vehicles to still use a big displacement naturally aspirated four cylinder at 2.5 liters. This does make more horsepower than a Honda Civic with its turbo, more horsepower than uh, a Toyota Corolla with its new two liter engine, but less horsepower than the turbo engines in a Volkswagen GTI or a Hyundai Elantra GT N line. Now it's newly available with all wheel drive. You can still get a choice between front or all wheel drive. The all wheel drive model that I'm showing you here weighs about 200 pounds heavier at 3,200 pounds. Now Mazda thankfully is one of the last manufacturers to still offer this thing with a six speed manual. If you want the manual, you have to uh, go, go with a front wheel drive model. All wheel drive is only limited to the six speed Skyactiv-G automatic transmission. Again, the transmission hasn't changed. It's down a couple gears compared to most of the competition. Now Mazda says you should expect zero to 60 times of around the seven second mark. And fuel economy, this is where the Mazda 3 has kind of always lagged behind. And unfortunately, Mazda hasn't really addressed that for this new generation. The hatchback is the lesser efficient choice between the sedan. The front drive model is rated at 25 in the city and 35 on the highway. If you guys go for this all-wheel drive model, it drops to 24 in the city, 32 on the highway. That actually is lower than what you get in something like the all-wheel drive Subaru Impreza hatchback, which gets about four MPG combined better. This is right on par with what you're gonna get from the turbo competitors like the uh, Hyundai Elantra GT N-Line or a Volkswagen GTI, which have considerably more horsepower than this vehicle. But um, this car with all-wheel drive with the six-speed automatic, let's get it on the road and see how it performs. So now that we're in the Mazda 3 hatchback, I wanna first talk about the rear suspension because semi-independent twist beam, that's like, sounds like cost cutting to me, but Mazda at the mini launch assured us that it's not just because of cost cutting. They said they went with this design because it just, it went with the overall platform. Remember, this is a new platform. And I have to say, here in my hometown of DC, the roads are pretty shitty. I'll just put it that way. And this is a typically bumpy road that I go on to test the ride quality and the Mazda 3 kind of just glides right over it. I don't really feel any harsh impacts that I would usually get with a torsion beam rear suspension. The car stays very planted. It feels very solid. So honestly, if Mazda never told me that I that they did a semi-independent twist beam in the back, I probably wouldn't have known. However, if they ever do follow this car up with a you know turbo version or a Mazda speed version, they need to add a multi-link independent rear just for you know, bragging rights, just because that, you know, enthusiasts, we hate the fact that, you know, this car has a semi-independent rear, even though I don't really notice it. But first, getting off or setting off in the Mazda 3 hatchback, I have to say the premium feel of the sedan is basically here. Uh, this is the all-wheel drive model, so it is a little bit heavier. So let's try out the acceleration. Uh, you put it into its sport setting here, turn off the traction control, and let's add a little brake torque and then floor it. Now, I've seen the zero to 60 time for this car at around the seven second mark. I think that's what Motor Trend just tested this car at. Um, honestly, it feels fine in terms of power. It really reminds me a lot of the previous generation with the same motor. The six speed auto has really been barely calibrated to be different, but honestly, it's the sound of this engine. It just kind of sounds like it's struggling, which isn't pleasant to my ears. It doesn't really like to rev. It just doesn't have that free revving smoothness that I really want this car to have. It's begging for more torque, especially that 2.5 turbo that I just drove in the CX-5 Signature and in the 6.
it just feels like it's taxed. It just makes very unpleasant four-cylinder noises, even though it has decent pull. I mean, this is quicker than something like a Volkswagen Jetta. It's quicker than the Toyota Corolla. It's quicker than a Subaru Impreza. Uh, it's quicker than a Chev Chevrolet Cruze, but the Elantra GT N-Line, the Civic Hatchback with its turbo, the Volkswagen GTI, they're all gonna smoke the Mazda 3. And if Mazda is going to keep up with those competitors, which is where I think they wanna play, they're gonna have to upgrade the powertrain. This 2.5 liter is just hugely disappointing when you start comparing it to the turbocharged competition. So with all wheel drive, there's no drama, there's no wheel spin, which the old Mazda 3 didn't really have problems with wheel spin. This still, you know, the all wheel drive system has, it's kind of, you know, got a 50-50 torque split. It's gonna split the power evenly uh, whenever the back or the front tires start to lose grip. But really, even if I turn off the traction control, even if I brake torque this vehicle, it's not going to spin out the wheels because of that all-wheel drive. You need to have a turbo, which honestly, if you guys drive the turbo Mazdas, uh, they actually have a little bit of torque stir, even though you guys have the all-wheel drive versions. But yeah, I mean, acceleration is perfectly adequate. It's perfectly fine. But I would really want to try this thing out with, you know, the turbo engine or the Skyactiv engine. That's supposed to be a mild supercharged uh, engine that's a compression ignition engine that makes around 180 horsepower, but more torque than what this car has. So Mazda still says it's coming, but it's not here yet. Uh, and that's kind of a disappointment. But putting the vehicle just into its normal drive setting and just co going down the road, the ride quality of this car is surprisingly good. Uh, even though it's got 18 inch wheels, it's very quiet in here again. Mazda is trying to go with more of a premium uh, brand and it's, uh, it's less road noise, less wind noise than previous Mazdas. Uh, and it's very, very quiet in here. The ride is very comfortable. The seats are comfortable. The visibility in here is also good. The steering in this car, I wanna talk about that because Mazda typically has excellent steering and the steering of this car, it feels like they've slowed the ratio, um, the steering ratio. It's not quite as quick-witted or sharp or precise as the last Honda Civic that I drove, which is kind of disappointing. This is pretty much on par with the Toyota Corolla, but come on, this is a Mazda. But when you start pushing the car, you can feel the chassis feels great. I mean, this car could easily handle another 100 horsepower. A 300 horsepower version would be phenomenal if Mazda decided to do it. I really want to drive this car with a manual. I actually haven't driven the front drive version of this car. So whenever Mazda gets a front wheel drive version here in DC, please send it my way because I would love to drive the manual or a front drive model to see how the differences are. But when you find your favorite back road and start hustling this car, it, will, it won't disappoint. This is a Mazda 3 and uh, the chassis feels really stiff. It feels really good. It's very quiet. You could easily daily drive this car. Now, in terms of, you know, some of the interior features in this car, how I mentioned earlier, it's missing. The heated steering wheel, I'd like them to bring that back, but I will say that ventilated seats are limited to cars like a Volkswagen Jetta, which is a sedan, um, or a Hyundai Elantra GT N-Line or a Kia Forte uh, 5. Uh, those are the only ones that offer cooled seats. So keep that in mind, but remember, Mazda Premium, they wanna be you know, at the forefront of that, so it's kind of a missed opportunity they didn't include that, but I mean, overall, this is such a pleasant driving car. I just, I feel like if you guys bought one of these, you know, and you really wanted those features like I do, Mazda may follow it up next year with a signature trim, which would be hugely annoying if that was, you know, if that was me and was, I bought this car. But if you guys don't care, the this car is going to be doing extremely well. Now, in terms of fuel economy, uh, Mazda did um, lower the gas mileage with the all-wheel drive model. I've been averaging around 23.9 uh, MPG, which isn't fantastic. Um, but I will say that the all-wheel drive model uh, does lug around more weight, so it's going to lower the fuel economy. Um, on the highway, I got it up to about 32 MPG, which isn't bad. Uh, it's right on target with the EPA numbers, but you know, cars like the Civic Hatchback are gonna get significantly better gas mileage. Even the Subaru Impreza uh, with all-wheel drive, again, it gets better gas mileage than this. So Mazda, if they added more gears, you know, a new transmission or a new engine, the Skyactiv X engine, they could really improve that. But overall, I like the new Mazda 3. I think it's got the best interior in the segment. But once they add a turbo, once they add the premium features that I associate with a premium brand, which they should have done uh, for a little bit more money, I think that's when the Mazda 3 could again really be the top you know, choice in this segment.
So after spending a full week with the Mazda 3 hatchback, I'm pretty much happy to report that everything that I loved about the sedan have been carried over onto the five door configuration. Now in the past, I always would say that I would choose the hatchback in a heartbeat. Unfortunately, with this new generation, the design definitely is a lot more controversial, but I can confidently say that I would still choose the hatchback model, even though the look is a little bit different because I personally like the utility and functionality of a hatchback. You didn't lose any actual rear seat space. You have more trunk space. You have the same premium interior. And really, if you guys want the red interior, you have to go for the hatchback model, which is definitely a no brainer for me. I must have the red interior and it looks especially good in this poly metal gray color, which is again, only limited to the hatchback body style. Now, speaking of which, at the beginning of this video, I asked, is the Mazda 3 hatchback still a viable GTI alternative? Now, just like the previous generation, its engine is a big letdown with this car. Mazda spent so much time with the premium aspects of this interior, but it's almost like it's been left unfinished because I would like to see ventilated seats. I would like to see them bring back the heated steering wheel and heated side view mirror option and add in heated uh, rear seats, which, which would have been a nice addition. And because this is supposed to be a Mazda premium car, the acceleration, as you guys saw, is fine, perfectly adequate, adequate from the 2.5 liter engine, but it just sounds like it's struggling, which is not something you associate with a premium vehicle. I think if Mazda decided to put the 2.5 liter turbo engine in this thing, or if they eventually brought the Skyactiv X motor here to America, I think it would do wonders with improving the overall credibility as a performance hot hatch with the Mazda 3 because we have been missing, asking, begging Mazda for a Mazda Speed 3 for years and they just haven't delivered. So I think there is a way for Mazda to incorporate their Mazda premium philosophy into this new 3 and they really need to do so because with all wheel drive, with a turbo engine, this thing would be on one hot new compact car that would seriously make me question why do you need to buy a luxury badge, which is what Mazda is after with their new Mazda premium philosophy. Now speaking of which, if you guys are looking to purchase this all new version of the Mazda 3, what's it going to cost? Well, this car, of course, is going to be more expensive because all the additional standard equipment and that seriously nice interior. It starts at $23,600 for a base hatchback model, which is a couple grand more than the uh, sedan version of this car. Now, if you guys want all wheel drive like this one, it's going to cost you another $1,400 for a nice even total of $25,000. Now, if you guys are going to step up to the signature trim, uh, that's going to cost you about $2,000 more. This premium trim that I'm showing you, which has the full leather, the adaptive headlights, the upgraded sound system, which sounds great stickers for around uh, $28,000 plus destination. My tester, of course, with a couple of Mazda accessories here and there, plus the 995 destination stickers for a tick over $31,000, which is about the same price as what you're gonna pay for a fully loaded version of a Subaru Impreza, uh, a Honda Civic, a little bit more expensive than a Toyota Corolla hatchback, uh, and a little bit less expensive, more expensive than a, a Hyundai Elantra GT N-Line, but it's significantly less expensive than a Volkswagen GTI, which is easily around $38,000 if you guys go for a fully loaded model. I think if Mazda came out with a turbo, with a signature trim, with the features that it has that I, that I would like it to have, I think that Mazda could easily charge about 33, 34,000 for this thing. And it's a car that, or it's a price that a lot of people would be willing to pay considering the fact that if you guys are weary about Volkswagen with their reliability, Mazda has a much better reputation in that regard. So I think that Mazda should consider adding those kind of features to make this thing even more desirable in this segment. But I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2019 Mazda 3 hatchback. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.